Hello again, everyone. Brian Martin with you here on a beautifully crisp December 31st evening. Happy New Year, everybody, as we head for Lesson 2 of our Master Class in Building a Helper. And uh, this one I'm calling one from column A, one from column B, uh, choices you have to make. And uh, the first thing we need to talk about is uh, I had a few people say, well, can you build a, a, a real helper? Um, that's going to take a lot of typing. So what I want to do in these videos is give you, we're going to build sort of a generic helper that doesn't really do anything for you, but it gives you, we're going to give you base concepts that you can use to go it alone and then figure out how you want to do things. So we will not be using any of the free games that are out there. Um, that don't have to worry about copyright infringement. It's just a lot of typing. Uh, it's a lot of extra work, and I just want to give basic concepts. So tonight's video is about um, the choices you have to make. And as you can see here, we have our Helper Madness Helper uh, that we started last time. We've got a button. Um, we have our control panel over here off to the side. Uh, we have our button labels. We've done a couple of things with some uh, counters. And just to show you how some of these things work. Now you have your sheet set up. You have some idea of where you'd like to have some fields set up and now you have to make some choices about how you want to go about doing what you need to do. First thing, the first choice that you're going to need to make is you have to go to File, Options, Advanced, and then you scroll down here Maybe in the wrong spot. Let's see. Yeah, down here where it says, when calculating this workbook. Um, i to find it here. Maybe in the wrong spot. I am in the wrong spot. Um, oh, sorry. You have to go to formulas. And where it says calculation options, automatic, automatic except for data tables and manual. You want to set this to manual. And here's why you want to set it to manual. You're going to pick... One of the next choices we're going to talk about is the choice you make about the randomizer you want to use. And one of the things you want to be able to do with your workbook is you always want to freeze your dice rolls so they can read the table. You can do all the things you need to do. Maybe hit some other buttons, and those buttons might allow you to track scoring, or it might to increment something, or you might need to add, enter some data in, whatever it is your helper does. If you leave the calculation to manual, then the, the randomizer will not work unless you hit the F9 key or you use the calculate command in one of your macros. And what that will allow you to do is it will allow you to keep a screen frozen so that the results will stay on screen while you resolve the play. If you use automatic, then anytime you hit the enter button, anytime you hit a key, the formula will recalculate, the dice will roll again, and you get a different result, and you'll lose what you had before. And you don't want to do that. You want your helper to be a helper, and it's not much of a helper if the, the, the results change every time the cursor moves. So you want to set this to manual, and then you click on OK. So that's the first choice you have to make. And it's really a choice that's made for you. If you want a good helper that does what you need it to do, it has to be set to manual. So now, what are some of the choices you have to make? Well, here we typed in the numbers 1, 2, and 3 for dice. There are two ways that you can do dice. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a big window here so that I can do these formulas in... Uh, in large uh, large font I'm just gonna and I'm gonna erase this when we're done but I can do some formulas here and do merge cells we're gonna do uh, like 16 point font two ways you can randomize dice the first is to use the rand between command and the ran between is equal ran between. You don't have to capitalize. It'll capitalize itself when it saves. The lowest number, comma, highest number. So if you want to do a D6, you put 1 to 6. You do a D10, 
you do one to 10. You do want to do D20, you do one to 20, and so on. We're gonna keep it simple because most of the games that we play uh, use D6. So if you do that, you type that, you'll see that, and I'll center this uh, here, you'll notice that the dice roll is six. And because I'm on manual calculation, if I hit F9, you'll notice that the die changes. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, we'll erase this, we'll type this formula in, is equal INT, which is to, to take the integer portion of a number, and that number is RAND, which is the randomizer, with two empty parentheses times the number of faces on your die, so in this case six, plus one. Okay, how is that important? And I'll show you why that's important. If I simply did RAND times six plus one, Okay. That's the result I get. Okay, so you got to use INT. INT takes the the two right there, and that's what it displays, and it drops off the rest. Here's what happens if you don't add the one. I'm gonna hit F9 a few times here, and watch what happens. Three. Five, five, zero. You can't have a die roll of zero. So it, by putting in the plus one, so really the, the highest number you can ever roll, we'll keep hitting these buttons here, the highest number you can ever roll is five. Five point nine 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 nine. Six is a very hard to get. You have to hit yeah, the randomizer has to be one. But the randomizer is a number between zero and one, not inclusive of zero and not inclusive of one. So the best you're gonna be able to do is have a random number of point nine 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 nine. And when you times that by six, you're gonna get five point nine 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 nine, and the integer portion is a five, and you'll never get a dice roll of six. So by putting INT in front of it. Now watch what happens. There's a three. One, two, three, four, five, three, four, two. I'm gonna keep going till I hit a zero. There's a zero. So again, you you that's that's zero. You can't have a zero. By adding the one at the end, you now get all of the range of dice. See that six popped up there a second ago? And six is there, another six. Now you can have all the ranges. Now, why is this choice important? Well, here's the rand between function. i hit F2 so you can see it again. From people much more knowledgeable about computers and much smarter about these sorts of things than I am, tell me that rand between function is not as random as the other version which we have, which is this equal int parenthesis rand parenthesis pair times six close parenthesis plus one. Something in the way that Excel handles the seed value for the rand between is not the same way that it handles the seed value here. The seed value is rand. And so it, it brings back a number. For those of you who want to know what that number is, let's just take this second version and let's just take out the INT portion. Let's take out the 6 and see what that does. You're getting numbers between 0 and 9. By multiplying it by the face of the dice, it means you're, you're getting now numbers between 0 and that number minus 1. So 0 and 5 for a 6-sided die, 0 and 9 for a 10-sided die, 0 and 19 for a 20-sided die. So that 1 plus 1 becomes important. So two variables, either ran between 1 and 6, 
or int ran times six plus one, your choice as to how you want to do that. We're going to uh, take these and we're going to erase, we're going to unmerge the cells. And we're going to erase what's in there and we're going to do something here. You notice what I'm doing is I'm taking that row above and I'm just doing that. What that does is it, it re restores the fo same formatting to all these cells. So for this thing, what I'll do here is I go equal int rnd times six plus one. And then one of the things we can do is we can do a control C and then instead of a paste, because I've got the, the, the colors already in there, you just right click and do a function or formula and then hit the F9 key and you'll notice now that I'm rolling three dice and they should all come up differently. So that's that's how you build, that's a, that's a simple way to build a dice roller. The second thing that you have is when you're building your tables. So we're going to build uh, the tables. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about before we get to building tables is your helper is where everything is pretty. Your helper is where everything is uh, has got font and conditional formatting and it's got boxes and it's got you know border borders and it's got stripes and it's got all the, the bells and whistles. It, it's, it's the pretty part. The charts behind them are not meant to be pretty. They're just meant to be functional. So we're going to build a quick little chart here. And we're going to call this um, fast, normal, slow. Doesn't mean anything, could be anything. And you can make this, and we're obviously setting this up for a six sided die and three choices to make on this particular sheet. So we're going to go A, uh, B, C, D, E, F. And maybe this one will do uh, A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, A, E. F. Maybe this one we do B A B B D C B D B E and B F. So we're just we're just making up stuff. So now one of the things that you're going to do, since we have these three values over here, is we're now going to have a choice as to what we want to do to bring these values back into the table. Two ways you can do it. You can do uh, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, or in, in the index function with nested match features, which is the most complex of them. But I'll show you why the VLOOKUP is useful for tables that never change their value, and why it's not useful for tables where you may add columns and rows later, like perhaps, say, a roster page or a team lineup page where you may add new columns and new data to it. When you have a pretty stead steadfast chart that's not going to change, you've got three columns and you know dice rolls from one to whatever, you, you can use VLOOKUP, but I'll show you why index match is probably the best version. So what I'm going to do, again, we're going to make this big, I'm going to make a big window here so that you can see this clearly. And we're going to put it on, oh, I don't know, 18 font. And so the formula that you want to use is equal VLOOKUP and then a parenthesis. And the lookup value, uh, the lookup value, let's just pick this single die. Let's not worry about making three die combinations and that stuff yet. Let's just assume it's just the single die. Look up the red value of the red die, B3. And I'm going to do, use that in each one of these three cells. So I want to lock that because when you drag the formula and copy it over, it does what's called relative uh, cell changes. So if I put B3 in this one, in this cell right here, and I copy it to here, 
B3 becomes C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M3. Well, M3 doesn't have anything in it. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to be in trouble. So what you just want to do is put a dollar sign in front of the B. What that does is it locks the column. No matter where you copy this formula, it will always look no further than column B. If you need to lock it for the rows as well, that if you're using this formula down and you copied it from here to here, then B3, B dollar sign, dollar sign B3 would be 4, 5. And we look at B5, there's nothing there. So what I usually do, if it's one die locked in, it's the only place we put another dollar sign in. There's a shortcut to that, typing in B3, and then hitting the F4 key immediately locks both the va values. If you hit it again, it locks just the row. If you hit it again, it locks the column. Hit it again, it takes it back to normal. We're going to lock that in. Then you put a comma in, and then you have a what's called a table array. And the array needs to include the first column where the die is and the columns in the table that you want to use. And again, you want to hit F4. That locks that in. It's only going to ever look at those groupings of cells. And then I hit column, comma, and then I pick the column of the table I want to bring back. It's automatically going to look at B3 in the first column. And for this first cell, I want to do look up column 2. And then I hit false because I'm not looking for an exact match. And then I hit enter. And you'll notice that on a roll of two, in that second column, it's B. So that, I can take this formula. I don't copy the cells, just copy the formula. I hit escape. It's on the clipboard. I go into the formula bar. I type that, and it's the same formula. There's, there's my B. Now I'm going to copy this over here. And say, well, wait a minute, Brian, it's the same thing. Yes, you have to do some checking. You have to do some changing. If you want this to be the column in the value in the first column, and the second value to be the comma in the set, the value in the second column, then you go here, and you have to change this two to a three. And you'll see it's AB, and you've changed this to, to a 4. And there you are. B, A, B, B, B on a die roll of 2. Let's roll the dice with an F9. 1, A, 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 B, A. A, 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 B, A. Now that's great, and it works really, really well until you do this. Watch what happens. I decide that I've got, I want to add a column. I want to call it uh, semi, semi-fast, just for grins and giggles. And I want to go A dash A and B dash B. And there's an autofill. I won't teach you how to do that. Just keep typing. Don't worry about it. Type over it if it, it fills it in for you. So now I've got that. So watch what happens now in the helper when I hit F9. A, 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 A dash A, then A, A. Well, where did, where did B, A go? It's still in the chart, right? And if you hit the formula button, you'll see that it says norm A2 through E7. If I escape and go here, A2 to E7. So it, is, it includes this whole table. Where did this go? What happened to it? Well, you have to add another fourth column to your thing and you would then say I gotta go in and let's say you only want to see columns 2, 3, and f 2, 3, and f 2, 4, and 5. Well this is hard coded to 2, this is hard coded to 3, this is hard coded to 4. So when I add a column and I still only want to see the original three columns, I gotta change the numbers now so it's looking at column 2, column 4, column 5. How can I change that? Well, I'm going to do that with one 
quick little thing here. And yeah, merge the cells. Okay. And we're going to center. It's a little bit of formatting, but this is the kind of stuff that you do. I mean, you're 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 going to be doing these things as you go. So the fact that I'm doing them here uh, isn't a, a big deal. I'm going to type in fast norm and slow. Okay. And I'm going to change my formula. This is the original formula. I'm going to show you what it is. Again, there's the VLOOKUP. Now I'm going to introduce to you the more powerful version of this, which is equal index. And then you, you go to the thing and take the array. You don't need to look at the first column. You just need the array of results. So you don't even need a dice roll. Because and then you hit the F4 key to lock that in. It's only going to look at that. And then you do match. This is for the row. Okay, the first one you do is for the row. You're going to match the die in that cell. And we're going to lock that in with another F4. And you're going to match it to this grouping here. We'll hit F4 again. And the comma and it's zero it is an exact match. Then we're going to do the match feature again, only this time we're going to match the value here. So we're going to lock hit F4 twice to lock the row. It only, we only wanted to look at the second row where that label is. We're going to go comma, go back here and go to the headers, hit an F4 again, another zero, close parenthesis, and then one more close parenthesis, and we are done. Now, When I take this formula, I'm going to do this. And this is the original. Copy this down. I'm going to copy this formula. Oh, hit the help button. Of course I hit the help button. I'm going to paste it. You don't copy the cells. Just highlight the formula, copy it, escape, and then go to the formula in the cells. And I'm going to just in this case, I can copy it. I'm going to hit F9. Okay, and you'll see that for a dice roll of one, I get A, 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 and B, A. Now, watch what happens when I hit SEMFAST and change that. Okay, here's the original. It's looking at columns two, four, and five. Hit F9. Notice that's still looking at column four. For dice roll three, column four is AC. However, using the match function, it looked and said match the three to here. That's my row. Then match this value to the headers, and that's my column. And so by changing that, now it gets C dash C, and as you can see on the normal thing, 3 sem fast is C dash C, and that's a very valuable change that you have. Show you one more quick change here. We're running at about 25 minutes. Here we're going to add another column. We're going to call it soup fast. And we're just going to type Washington. Adams, Jefferson, Madison. Let's just leave it alone, Monroe. <laughs> I'm a stickler for correcting things even in a thing. And Q, Adams. Okay. So now I have soup fast. All I have to do is change this to S-U-P-F-A-S-T, hit F9, and look what happens. Again, this is still looking at column 4, but now column 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that's the SEMFAST. And column 5 is double A. So I've got AF for row 6, but row 6 
is F for fast, Q Adams for super fast, and BF for slow. And look at that. F for fast, Q Adams super fast, BF for slow. So that's a choice that you can make in starting to build the tables that you need and how you can uh, bring those things together. Um, I don't want to get too much. This is choices to make for formulas to get you started on looking up tables, and it's also an introduction to lookups. I'll give you one bonus feature before we get done, and that is how do I put these three dice in the correct order without having to do a whole lot of extra math? And thankfully, our, our good friends, uh, mathematicians, have given us exactly the way to do this that um, doesn't require a whole lot of anything other than knowing a little bit of statistics, okay? So you have a three uh, thing. So first of all, let's say it's we're using like History Maker Baseball where you're going to read the lowest die first. You're going to go equal min, which is for minimum, and highlight all three dice rolls, three dice. You're going to use the ampersand because you're now going to take that value and add the next value to it. You're going to do median of the same group. Another ampersand, and you're going to do max for the same group, and then you're going to hit that and hit enter, and look what happens. Look at that. Pull that and make, kind of uh, center that so you can see that away from the edge. 266. Hit the F9 key. 335, hit the F9 key, 255, hit the F9 key, 234. And for those of you that and didn't take statistics in, in high school or college, or it's been so long you've forgotten, by taking the minimum, it'll bring back the lowest value, whatever that value is. So if you have two ones, it'll bring back the one. The maximum brings back the highest value. So what does median do? Median is the middle number in any group. So I have three numbers. It will take the middle one of any group that I have, the three, and put it right there. When I roll and get doubles of any number, it takes the two as the minimum, but then when it looks at the middle number, it lines them up in that it automatically lines it up as two, two, five, and picks the two in the middle, puts it there. So it picks two as the lowest, picks two as the middle, picks five as the highest. There you go. One, three, five, same thing. Six, two, four, same thing. It works 100% of the time, thanks to mathematicians giving us, and well, the Excel giving us the minimum and maximum function, and mathematicians for determining that the median is the middle value of any set of numbers. Since we have an odd number, the middle number is always going to be the third number that's neither the highest nor the lowest, and whenever there's a double, it, the double automatically has to be in the middle uh, when you line them up. So those are some choices that you can make and a bonus feature on how you can create three roll dice rolls. And this is a text field, but if you wanted to, that's an extra added bonus, if you put that entire formula in the middle of uh, a value with some things, now it's a number. And that number then can be used as a number in anything else. When it's a text value, it means that you would have to, in order for you to use it in lookup tables, you'd have to make sure that all of your dice rolls were entered as text number, text fields, not as numbers, because you get what's called a type mismatch. And we can get into some of those error features later. But in a half an hour, we've covered a, a, a sizable chunk of ground in terms of making some decisions of how, which, which randomizer you want to use, which of the lookup features you want to use, and I do suggest if it's if you have anything that's going to be changing, and even if it doesn't change, having those column labels and doing this um, this particular index match function is going to is going to be fantastic for you. You have to build it every time, and you're going to have to build that for every lookup table. There's no way to build one lookup 
uh, function and just use it a million times because the the tables all change. Some are six rows, some are 36 rows, so it depends on what the charts are. Um, but that's pretty much some of the basic things that you need to get started on making some determinations. So play around with it. Your homework for tonight's master class is use the function, use the RAND functions to, to create dice. They don't have to be in blocks like this if you don't want. You can just have a single cell with the same with that same formula. You can do a big formula if you want. You can build out a table or two. Try it out. See how those things work. The more you use it, the better you are at it, and the more you understand how it all fits together. And then we can start introducing concepts about how do I get different results to be pulled in? How do I create window values and turn windows on and off and all that other stuff? Um, and that will be coming in future uh, future uh, episodes of Masterclass. So once again, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you for listening. I, I'm, I've been happy at the interest that this uh, series has generated, and I hope to continue it um, for the foreseeable future. So till next time, everybody, good gaming, good night. We'll see you again soon.